Thomas in Trouble There is a line to a quarry at the end of Thomas's branch. It goes for some distance along the road. Thomas was always very careful here in case anyone was coming. He whistled. Then the people got out of the way and he puffed slowly along with his trucks rumbling behind him. Early one morning, there was no one on the road, but a large policeman was sitting on the grass close to the line. He was shaking a stone from his boot. Thomas liked policemen. He had been a great friend of the constable who used to live in the village, but had just retired. Thomas expected that the new constable would be friendly too. He whistled, Good morning! The policeman jumped and dropped his boot. He scrambled up and hopped round on one leg till he was facing Thomas. Thomas was sorry to see that he didn't look friendly at all. He was red in the face and very cross. The policeman wobbled about trying to keep his balance. Disgraceful! He spluttered. I didn't sleep a wink last night. It was so quiet. And now engines come whistling suddenly behind me. My first day in the country too. He picked up his boot and hopped over to Thomas. I'm sorry, sir, said Thomas. I only said good morning. The policeman grunted. And leaning against Thomas's buffer, put his boot on. He drew himself up and pointed to Thomas. Where are your cow catchers? He asked accusingly. But I don't catch cows, sir. Don't be funny, snapped the policeman. He looked at Thomas's wheels. No side plates either. He wrote in his notebook. Engines going on public roads must have their wheels covered and cow catchers in front. You haven't, so you are dangerous to the public. Rubbish, said his driver. We've been along here hundreds of times and never had an accident. That makes it worse, the policeman answered. He wrote regular lawbreaker in his book. Thomas puffed sadly away. The fat controller was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. He had the newspaper open in front of him, and his wife had just given him some more coffee. The butler knocked and came in. Excuse me, sir. You are wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said the fat controller. I'm sorry, my dear, he said a few minutes later. Thomas is in trouble with the police and I must go at once. He gulped down his coffee and hurried from the room. At the junction, Thomas's driver told the fat controller what had happened. Dangerous to the public indeed. We'll see about that. And he climbed grimly into Annie the coach. The policeman was on the platform at the other end. The fat controller spoke to him at once and a crowd collected to listen. Other policemen came to see what was happening, and the fat controller argued with them too. But it was no good. The law is the law, they said, and we can't change it. The fat controller felt exhausted. He mopped his face. I'm sorry, driver, he said. It's no use arguing with policemen. We'll have to make those cow catcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Everyone will laugh at me, sir, said Thomas sadly. They'll say I look like a tram. The fat controller stared. Then he laughed. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it before? We want a tram engine. When I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. He hasn't enough work to do and needs a change. I will write to his controller at once. A few days later, Toby arrived. 
That's a good engine, said the Fat Controller. I see you brought Henrietta. You don't mind, do you, sir? asked Toby anxiously. The station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do. No, indeed, said the Fat Controller gravely. We couldn't allow that. Toby made the trucks behave even better than Thomas did. At first, Thomas was jealous, but he was so pleased when Toby rang his bell and made the policeman jump that they have been firm friends ever since.